up guys on the backup channel what's going on with y'all shout out to the backup channel I'm live right now I'm chilling driving around LA y'all hop on in and if y'all could share this live that'll be great what's up guys on my other main page they didn't block me from going live y'all know how they do so I got to go live right here on my backup channel out here in Hollywood doing what we do. What's up, Cat Gaga? I see you. How y'all doing? Everybody share this live. Y'all share this live. No, you thought it was a catfish page? No, no, no. There's a lot of fake Tariq pages, but this is my real backup page. You'll be having fat white men pretending to be my ass. So this is the real deal. All right. So y'all hit the, the like button. Um, y'all share the page, share this. And I'm out here chilling. I got my road dog with me right here. I got Willie. What up, fam? What's going on, my man? Willie out here hey, chilling. Man. Out I here enjoying this great LA weather, man. It's beautiful, man, with the homie Tariq, man. Wish y'all could be here, man. Yes, sir. You no, know, yeah. but I, I'll live it up for you, man, in, in the spirit of, 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 of fellowship, you know? Now, Willie, did you see, and I want to get your opinion on the, the latest verses. Did you see that classic verses? with Kane and Chris. I hadn't seen it yet. Oh, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen oh, it at wow. all. I've seen some clips. Okay. But what do you think? Who do you think? I, I think, and I love Kane, but I think Chris got him. I yeah. think Chris got him. Chris had more records. Chris had more hits. Um, Kane had better stage presence. He was lyrically more inept, but um, more thorough. But I still think Chris got him. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have people approach you, you guys, the Ghetto Boys, about doing a, a versus? Uh, Swiss and uh, you know nobody from the up top has approached us. We've had a lot of people talking about it, but we haven't had anybody just directly approach us. Anybody like uh, Swiss or uh, uh, Timberland. Who would be what group from that era would be a great, worthy opponent for the Ghetto Boys? You guys have a great catalog. What would who would be a worthy opponent for the Ghetto Boys? Wow. I think the easy question is like what the fans are always uh, asking for. What, you know, like when, when people talk about the ghetto boys, they talk about the greatest groups of all time, hip hop groups of all time. You know, it's like whatever that conversation is, the conversation always is, is NWA, it's ghetto boys, it's, it's UGK, it's Wu Tang, you know, it, it's, it's, it's outcast. You know, public enemy, like any of these groups would be formidable opponents. Yeah. You know, so so you know, I would uh I would, you know, I would welcome whatever the fans would want. You know, and, and I'ma tell you, I, I you know, I I had grown a little weary of, of the versus battles and stuff because I thought it was reaching a dark place. It wasn't like really fun anymore. Mm. But then, you know, they kind of pivoted and, and it got back to that that camaraderie, you know? Yeah. So I like that about it because, like, I got respect for all of my contemporaries. You know, we, we put a lot of work in. And to see these guys, you know, get their flowers. Yeah. And remind people of, you know, hey, man, we put some work in and we, we, we laid the foundation for this, you know, and, and, and to see people be appreciative of that. Yeah. It's beautiful to see, you know, so. Now, some people said UGK. I I wouldn't see that because Pimp C ain't here. You know what I'm saying? Well, Bushwick ain't here. Either. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. No, and, 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 and Eric is not here. You know, right? You know? Right. So, NWA, right? Yeah. You know. So so uh, the music is still here, though. Okay. And okay. I and I just believe that the, the music is gonna live longer than any of us are gonna live. Right. Right. And so you let the music play. Let, let the music let the music play and then you let the fans decide, you know, you know, uh, what what it is that they you know, appreciate it more or whatever. You let them pick it apart. Somebody but, uh, somebody said EPMD. 
EMD, EPMD, EPMD is another great group. Yeah, you know, like there was so many. Like we came from an era of great groups. Like right now, if you think about it, man, there ain't many groups. Right, 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 right. In hip hop, almost everybody is solo. Yeah, but we came up. We came up with, like in an era of groups, like great groups where you didn't have just one dude that was dope. You know, the whole damn crew was dope. Right, you know? right. And, and so, and then, and that's indicative of how it, how everybody was able to go solo and, and get, you know, gold and platinum records, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, you were a solo artist. Were you a solo artist before you joined the Ghetto Boys? Because I remember the first cassette. Was it Controversy? Yeah. Was that before you got in the group? Man, that was, Controversy was like two months before the Ghetto Boys' first album. And I was like, Sometimes I kick myself, put everything in the ghetto boys, and I yeah. kind of like put my stuff on the side, you know, being a team player. I was like, man, I just wanna, I wanna, I'm gonna ride with the team, you know. Yeah. So, so I didn't do any any type of promotions, any, any type of show, solo stuff, nothing. Yeah. So I never really got a chance to really do my so, do any solo stuff with that so that first solo album, that controversy, that controversy album, which was my most uh, most my, my most successful album. Yeah. So. Uh, but I put that out, boys, and we never looked back. Wow, wow, yeah. yeah. Um, when did the Ghetto Boys first go gold? Which album went gold first? That was 1990, uh, 1989, Gripping on the Other Level. Okay. That's the first album that me, Brad, and Bill did together. Right, because there was a, a first Ghetto Boys lineup. It was a dude from, I think, New Jersey or something, right? Yeah, that, that was... Man, that was like two different lineups before we even got there. Mm. You know, and then you know, we switched it up a couple of times. You know, we had Red was in the group at one point, Ready Red, I DJ. Yeah. And then Big Mike was in the group at one point. Yeah. Uh, and then I came back, I rejoined the group yeah. in 96. And then it's been us ever since we grabbed a bill. What was what happened with y'all and Rick Rubin? I know Rick Rubin had um, got you on Deaf American at one point. It was distributed distributed through Deaf Deaf American. Yeah. But then there was some kind of fallout. Yeah. I remember there was some kind of fallout that you guys kind of fell out of good graces with Rick Rubin. Now what happened with that situation? Well, Rick fell out of good graces with us. Uh oh. You know, well, what happened is that you know it was like um, you know what. It, I won't say I won't say anybody necessarily fell out of good graces because Rick Rubin is a great guy. I mean, he's he, he's contributed a lot to hip hop, and he, I don't think he gets enough credit. Right. So, uh, what happened was that is that the, the the label that was distributing Rick Rubin's music, uh, his label, Deaf uh, Deaf American Records, right? Right. Right. They refused to distribute the Ghetto Boys album, the We Can't Be Stopped album. Okay. So we switched it up and we uh, we decided to keep it moving and that we went and did a deal with Priority. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, uh, we, had to, we had to break from Rick, you know, in order to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, Rick, Rick Rubin is one of the brilliant minds in music, not just hip hop. But Music period. Now, what did Rick and those guys do? Because I know they did some kind of remastering of the album, yeah. and I didn't like the way they remastered the album. Yeah, they remixed it and remastered it, and they put too much bass in there. I remember this very distinctively. Yeah, the original album was clean. They, I don't know what they tried to do with it, but it was, it didn't have the same feel. What did they do to it? They gave it. They they, they put more. Uh, they put more guitars in it. Oh, okay. And gave it a more of a rock feel. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. But, and what they actually did was it it, uh, it extended our fan base. Okay. So we already had a large fan base of you know uh, people in the hood and you know uh, a large fan base of black people. We already had that. Yeah. Once we started, once Rick came in with that remix, and and then he he did a couple of uh, he added a couple of new songs. We added a couple of new songs to it. Uh, it just really opened our fan base all the way up. Okay. okay. So, I mean, I mean, again, you know, like it was nothing to take away from that. You know, we had already had when we put that first album out. When we put the album out that he remixed. 
we already had all the fans we was gonna pretty much get from that album. Okay. So when he remixed it, he brought in new blood. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was a, I was a, a already a diehard fan of the group, so I'm yeah. like, hey man, the shit ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. But yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I can see that. I can see that. It's, at the end of the day, you know, it it comes down to preference. Yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of like how when somebody take any kind of hit record, it could be hip hop or whatever, but if a record is big enough, they're gonna remix it. And you're gonna have a pop version of it. It's gonna be a techno version. It's gonna be a country western version of it. Yeah. Stuff. You know, and, and all of that is to is, is to extend the fan base. Mm. Did you guys? Would you say you guys pretty much created the Houston sound? Because Houston has a very distinct sound. Yeah. Uh, I won't take credit for that because the Ghetto Boys have a more of a universal sound. Okay. And, and if you listen to Houston, if you listen to those people who get, who people say, oh, that's a Houston sound, it's more of a regional sound. Okay, all you right. You can't pinpoint Ghetto Boys sound. Okay. You can't pinpoint it. It's, it's universal. Yeah. I, I would I would get at, as far as like, now as far as being the trailblazers, the founder, the, the, the forefathers, you know, you know, the guys who put the city on the map hip, hip hop wise, that's us. Yeah. Yeah. But as as far as that as far as having that distinctive Houston sound, you know, I would I would I would I would credit I would DJ get, Screw, right? I would get that credit more so to DJ Screw and, okay. and those guys. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did you you guys ever work with Screw on anything? Never worked with Screw. You know, to be honest, uh, the Screw music was not my taste because I didn't smoke. Oh, okay. you know, so like yeah. it was like a lot of dudes who was smoking and stuff. You yeah, bring the music doing down. that lean and yeah, yeah you know yeah. I, I ain't doing any of that. So yeah. you know I didn't really listen to the music, but I was cool with me and me and, me and Screw was cool. You know, okay, that was the homie. So I respected what he was doing. He had a different lane, and I respected I respected what he did. Uh, but but I didn't really listen to the music because. Uh, I like my music at a certain tempo. Now, on your first album, Controversy, it was ahead of its game because you had a girl on there named Choice. I remember her. Right. And she was like one of the first female rappers I heard doing real raunchy raps about right, her right. pussy and all this right. stuff, which is, everybody's doing it now. You right. did that shit 30 years ago. Yeah. How did you find that sister? Uh, let's see, how did, how did that happen? I think it was just a situation, it was one of those situations where Jay wanted to do, he wanted to put out a female rapper. Yeah. You know, and he asked me, you know, to, to pen some lyrics for him. Okay. You know, so I said, okay, I, I can do that. And so he brought, he brought the, uh, the, the, the first, the first choice that we had, it was two different choices, that's what a lot of people don't know. Oh, I didn't know that. Originally, Choice was uh, this girl. I, I forgot her name, uh, but we started off with her. Yeah. About maybe three, four songs in, and we had great chemistry. Yeah. About three, four songs in, my mama started leaning on her about the lyrics. Mm, mm. You know I'm saying, you know, she didn't want her doing it. Yeah. So she was trying, they was, it was a little tug of water after for a moment, and then mama eventually won over. Yeah, yeah. So she stepped down, and then the choice that everybody know stepped in and, and, and redid the songs that she did and finished it. Oh, like wow. on the first, on the Controversy album, the original choices on the first Controver on the Controversy album. Yeah. Everything else that you hear from choice is the, the the second coming of choice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Let me see what's going on. Somebody said the thing that's is Kim. Kim. Her name Kim is Kim. Is name. Okay. Yeah, that's the second choice. Kim. Oh. Yeah. All right. I feel like I'm having some technical technical difficulties here, guys. Let me try to re go. I'm gonna try to go live again, but I'll be right back, guys. Hold on.